we've just upgraded our little micro camper van to this. Let's show you around. You know me as the guy who climbs mountains, goes on loads of adventures in his little tiny micro camper van. I've just sold that little micro camper van. I got myself a new toy. Let's show you around my new long wheelbase VW Crafter. Yes, we're gonna be converting this into another camper van. <laughs> yes, it's a really big job, but it's gonna be so cool. So let's start on the outside before the rain starts to come in again. It's a 2019 VW Crafter sat on a 68 plate. So that means it's about two years into the newer shape. That newer shape comes with these squarer headlights because the old ones had little headlights that come all the way up sort of thing it's got a little bit of chrome on the roof but this isn't the standard start line this is the trend line version so we've got a few extra toys inside don't get me wrong this van does have a few little issues we'll go through that on the next video it's the L4 so it's the length 4 H3 so it's the height 3 that basically means it's just really long and inside I've got enough room to be able to jump up and down it going further down the, the van we've got the indicators on the mirrors which is just amazing it's gonna just be it's a bit more fancy i guess we've got deadlocks throughout the van the side sliding door you wait oh there we go see how big that sliding door is is absolutely massive so that means one we've got great views and stuff two we can bring the kitchen out a little bit more and still have loads of room to be able to get in working further down the back of the van there's not really anything to write home about these little black noggins they're magnets so when we do open the doors I'll go through the inside slightly later. We can pull this off like that. Bang. Typical builder's van. And it holds the doors open on a magnet really coolly. I have no idea where Woody's going to go on the outside of this van. So if you see somewhere, let me know in the comments. I just think the back looks super cool. Down the bottom, we've got reverse sensors all the way around. A big step and reversing camera all the way up there. Being a bigger van, I'm definitely going to need that reverse camera. This side is exactly the same, just with no sliding door here. And then on the front, again, we've got parking sensors. Inside the back of the van, obviously, enough headroom to... Look, look, at, look, at, look at how much space we've got. We worked out the bed comes to about here. <laughs> so from there, the door just shut on me. Technical, isn't it? There we go. <coughs> All that space. We'll go through the full plan of what we're going to do inside this van on a later video. So subscribe for that. We have got some pretty ingenious sort of ideas and plans. Let's see if we can put them into practice. Inside the passenger side. Now this one is the trend line version. So we've got the big infotainment screen and stuff like that. We'll run through that in a minute. Two seats on a passenger seat. And they are pretty cool because we pull that on both seats. We've got loads of storage space underneath there. Maybe a diesel heater, maybe the batteries. That's the driver's seat. We've got a bulkhead that's going to obviously be removed. Big glove box down here, and that is massive. Loads of extra storage here, and you'll see we've got absolutely loads of cup holders dotted all the way around. Again, loads of storage in the door card. Imagine the junk that's going to get piled up in this van. But let's go and have a look at the driver's side and the infotainment system because it's quite cool, I think. Same storage on the door card, but we've got some locking buttons just there and full electric mirrors, heated mirrors and electric windows we're out the wind now we can do so much with this one again being the trend line we've got the obviously infotainment system we've got air con all the heating controls all over the place uh, we can lock the back but keep the front open with the automatic stop start when you do stop at lights again air con the steering wheel loads of controls for cruise control and you can talk into it and games and you can do everything you want there i wonder if eventually i can connect a hose of like a round big thick round hose to the air, con air conditioning system to one of the hoses already and run it into the back so i've got aircon in the back when the engine's running we've got a 12 volt socket there we've got another 12 volt socket there and we've got some more auxiliary ports there i'm about to plug that one into my phone to activate that we've got 67,000 mile on this van which as you vw nuts will know these vans can go around a clock a couple of times. That's absolutely nothing for this van. When I actually went to look at this van, I went to look at a medium wheelbase van, and um, there was a couple there. One of them had 314,000 mile on the clock, and it still held a price tag of 11,000 pound. It just goes to show they can do an awful lot of mileage. I went there for a medium wheelbase, and I come out with a long wheelbase. <laughs> The full infotainment system is a minefield. I'm still trying to figure out how to work it, but you can link your phone, media, radio, voice controls, mute. But not just all of these different things. You can go into, uh, let's see if I can figure it out, menu, app connect. It's all touchscreen. You can go onto everything. Auto, yes. 
you can definitely tell this infotainment system was made for someone up, oh, I don't know, about 11 years old. <laughs> We've got full-on Google Maps and stuff around here. Let's have a look. I don't know. We'll go there, uh, tell you where it is. It's just normal bog-standard Google Maps, but it's linked straight off your phone. The full... You can see everything. How cool. That's just the sat-nav. You've got the full thing here where you can get messages. You can voice reply to messages. You can do whatever you want if your phone is linked to it just like this. I like this. Game snacks. It shouldn't be on here. Uh, just play games while you're stuck in traffic. Or why not while you're sat there on the road? Let's have a play of a game. Level 1. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. Tap two matching items. Tap, tap. Okay. Is that good? See, I'm no good with technology. We've got so many plans with this van. Uh, we'll reveal that in a future video. We've also got a fair few problems with this van. I'll reveal that in the next video. The passenger seats are actually really cool. Like you already know, you pull that and you've got both of the seats come up with big storage underneath. But then you've also got another one here. So if you pull that, this whole middle seat folds down. We've got even more cup holders, slots for stuff like that. Paperwork goes under there and trays. This is a great for an armrest for the passenger, but the pa driver's seat already has its own armrest. Nothing's connected to the bulkhead except for just a couple of little coat hooks. So when we remove the bulkhead to help turn this into a micro camper van, it's not really going to be a micro camper van, but a camper van nonetheless. It's going to make it look so much bigger. As for miles per gallon, it seems to be the biggest topic for larger vans. What is it? How does it work? And stuff like that. For me, I can set cruise control at 7 mile an hour and it will average around about 30 miles to the gallon with the two litre engine that's in this however I'm, I went through a 50 mile an hour average speed camera setup at 50 mile an hour on the cruise control and that was averaging upwards of 60 miles per gallon so since then I've kind of been just at uh, 56 I'll sit uh, enough space behind a lorry click on cruise control and just sit there and I've been averaging a really good miles per gallon it's doing really well it's got a 65 litre fuel tank on it I only know that because when I filled it, filled it up after I um well if you saw the end of my last video you'll know I filled it up after my last picking it up and it was 65 litres a couple of safety features that are built into this which I think are quite ingenious We've got two different warnings that I've noticed so far anyway. One, it warns you when you're getting too close to the vehicle in front of you, which was great for me sat at 56 mile an hour because you sort of just lose a little bit of interest, so to speak, or you're just not as on the ball as what you would be if you were driving with your normal accelerator. That's one of the problems with cruise control. Anyway, the lorry in front had slowed down a little bit because it was going up a really steep hill, and I got a little bit closer. It warned me that I was getting too close. On the flip side to that, lane departure. Now, I drive coaches for a living, so I know what lane departure is. We've got it built into the coaches. If you sway slightly over the line on a lane on a motorway, it will automatically warn you. It will beep at you saying, lane departure. I think that's highly, highly needed, especially when you're running around on cruise control. Over this side, we've got stability control. Ooh. So basically, when you're driving along and it's in high winds and you're rocking, it will stop you rocking basically i don't know how it does it i don't know the technicality behind it but it avoids you rocking it throws light upon the dash to say stability and it's just it's really cool i think in high winds that's great for high sided vehicles i really love this feature so we've got a six speed gearbox but if i pick that up put it into reverse it throws up these lines on the back take the handbrake off and i turn the steering wheel watch those lines it tells you you swing how far out your front end's going to swing and it'll automatically tell you if you're going to hit something either front or back. That is our 2019 long wheelbase VW Crafter for a future camper van build. It's an absolutely amazing van and I can't wait to show you guys everything, the whole process. We'll talk through videos on how we managed to afford this and how you could do exactly the same. Loads of different videos to show that anybody could do this. Anybody could have a nice van and convert it into a nice camper van eventually. If you're interested, just hit that subscribe button, because why not? <laughs> subscribe to see how many mistakes I make when I build this into a camper.